to you live from the great state of Kansas. More specifically, Lucas, Kansas. More specifically than that, I am standing in front of the world's largest souvenir tourist plate here in Lucas. Lucas is a town known for its folk art, for its, uh, its homespun whimsy, and uh, that is why we have come here to Lucas. So let's take a look at this souvenir plate and see what there is to see here in Lucas, Kansas. You can see the Garden of Eden up there. That, that is why we have traveled here to Lucas. That is a classic attraction. We're going to be there momentarily, but let's take a look at some of these other items on here. You can see they actually have a picture of this souvenir plate painted on the souvenir plate itself. See the historic downtown. There's a, a robot destroying everything for some reason. But yeah, looks like my kind of town. And we have arrived at the Garden of Eden. This is the creation of a man by the name of Sam Dinsmore, who created this in the early 1900s. This is believed to be one of the oldest folk art environment roadside attractions in existence. And actually was created for the purpose of being a roadside attraction. Built these sculptures, a mix of religion and politics. Two things you should never talk about at dinner. Uh, a mixture of religion and politics and the statues. And apparently he is actually buried here or entombed here in, uh, let me see, oh yeah, that, I think that is the mausoleum right there. Um, he actually at one point dug his, when he was creating this, his wife died, and he went to the cemetery, dug her up, and entombed her here in the Garden of Eden. Um, they do give tours. I'm gonna go check in and see, uh, see what the options are, but uh, let's take a look at the Garden of Eden. Follow me. Now this is the Sam Dinsmore home. This is where he lived with his two different wives, at uh, different times, not at the same time. But this is the, the home that he lived in. And um, it's meant to look like a log cabin, even though it's made of concrete, but it's laid out like a log cabin. And then these right here are actually beer bottles. He would fill beer bottles with concrete to make these forms. Apparently this was some sort of statement about uh, this being a dry county. This is Sam's first wife, Frances Barlow. And over here is him with his second wife. She's a little bit younger than he was. She didn't, uh, she didn't stick around here to uh, be entombed, but his first wife and him are still here. Second wife, don't know where she went. See these taxidermied animals. My understanding is that these were animals that actually lived here, that he had a small zoo as part of the attraction and taxidermied them when they passed away. Look at this stylish bullhorn chair. See the bedroom in here, the quilted bed. Now here we see Lady Liberty up there actually stabbing an octopus to death the octopus representing big business. And then we see the working men here trying to saw off big business from the pole. Said that Dinsmore was a man of the people and he shows here uh, an African American as well as a woman over there saying all people deserve the right to be in power, to, to ho say how things go, not just big business. This American flag here used to fly on top of the mausoleum, but it was taken down because it was too big. But you can see the flag is being pulled, not by an eagle, but by a turkey, because Dinsmore believed that Ben Franklin was right when he wanted to make the turkey the uh, official bird of America. So there's the brave turkey its rightful place pulling the American flag. You can see here is a labor crucified. Figure in the middle represents labor. 
mocked and crucified on that pole. And it says that he is surrounded by the people that took from the working man the doctor right there, the preacher right there, the banker, and the lawyer. Now here's the mausoleum. This is where Dinsmore and his first wife are preserved. See there's an angel there on the top reaching down. Now the tour guide just took us in to the mausoleum and it's actually the only place you're not allowed to film or video on the tour. And there is a reason for that because he is in there. And I don't mean he's in a coffin. Well he is in a coffin, but his coffin is a glass covering so you can see um, his face. And he's been, been in there been in the coffin for 80 years and he wasn't preserved in a traditional way he made up his own or had his own idea of how he should be preserved and that was to be preserved in charcoal and so he was placed in his co preserved in charcoal uh, put in the uh, the casket with the glass and apparently the glass broke at some point there was a little break in the glass and it let moisture in and uh, because of that he looks like he looks like a Halloween prop, but he looks very, very scary. Um, his his face, they said that he was preserved almost perfectly before the crack, but his face is rotting, his suit is covered in mold. His, he still has a big bushy beard, but his face is like sinking in like a skeleton. Uh, yeah, it looks kind of like the, the Crypt Keeper, and um, yeah, very frightening, very frightening. So I can definitely understand why they don't want you taking pictures of that or filming that. Uh, it's a little, a little, a little it's, it's something. Um, his wife's in there too, but she's, you can't see her. She's um, in concrete. And um, apparently he used to actually uh, let people uh, take a picture uh, posing in his coffin before he used it. So uh, a showman at his best. And uh, yeah, you can still go in there and, and see him. That is, it was, that was wild. Here we have the small uh, zoo that uh, Sam kept here at his property. See these cages? A little a little home there for animals to burrow down in. And yeah, those animals that we saw inside lived in these enclosures. This is the washroom right here. Oh, and there's the tools that were used to build this house and the garden. It's amazing those like Simple tools could build all this. This walkway here, it's very short. It said that Dinsmore was only five foot two, so he built everything in a little smaller scale. See this serpent winding around here, ready to devour that duck. Okay, I didn't realize this while walking under it, but this whole walkway, this is the snake right here, coiled over top of the walkway, the snake from the Garden of Eden. There we see Eve, that apple, taking the apple from the snake. And then we have Adam right there. And Adam's actually stomping on the foot of the snake. The snake runs over the walkway, and then it is either giving the apple to Eden or to Eve or, or stealing it from her, I'm not, not entirely sure. And you can see here lurking over top Adam and Eve is the devil himself wrapped in the tree of knowledge. Look at that. See how there's a series of concrete trees wrapped around the property showing off the different uh, tableaus of religion or politics. Some vultures hovering over the garden right there. See some figures with a ram and then a little girl swinging underneath them. Not sure what's going on in this tree. We have an angel up above and then a dead corpse. Now there's some sort of little demonic dog hovering over the dead corpse. Well, this is very interesting. Very up for interpretation. A lot of progressive political messaging here. See the American flag up there. And then the trust or the banks is portrayed as this big octopus grabbing the world, grabbing the money, grabbing the interest. You can see the soldier right there. 
a Native American firing bow and arrow. See a deer there in the bushes. Now the Garden of Eden was preserved by the Kohler Foundation, um, the rich family, the, the richest toilet making family in the country. But apparently they also have a love of folk art and have put money into preserving different pieces of folk art and they did that to preserve the Garden of Eden. They've also preserved another attraction over here known as Miller's Park, a little town of stone miniatures that was a uh, roadside attraction. I guess they moved it here because its original location was taken over. You can see all these interesting rock sculptures here. They have a little tiny rock village there in the back. There's a little castle there on top of the mountain. A wishing well there in the back. Apparently this is a replica of the first store in Eben, Kansas. Look at this, the world's smallest mural. Huh, it's pretty small. And look at this. This is the uh, world's largest collection of the smallest version of the world's largest thing. This was, uh, used to tour around the artist uh, Erica Nelson who, uh, drew, who created that plate the tourist plate when we came into town uh, would tour around in this bus um, and she would make creations of, uh, of, of you know you go to world's artist sites I show that a lot of my channel and there is uh, would have miniature versions of those and tour around and show them um, she actually has a permanent museum now um, here in Lucas unfortunately uh, was not able to uh, coordinate uh, a time we weren't able to, to get our ducks in a row together to uh, be able to tour that, but uh, cool to see this. I guess this is another vehicle that would have been used to uh, transport the world's smallest versions of the world's largest thing. Yeah, you can see the jackalope there on the roof, and look at that. That's the Wigwam Village. That's the one in Holbrook, Arizona. You can see the Corn Palace right there. Oh man, some of my favorite places. There in the window you can see the uh, the world's uh, smallest version of the world's largest ketchup bottle. The world's largest pair of underwear city museum in St. Louis. I've seen that. There's the Superman statue from Metropolis. The whale from uh, Catoosa, Oklahoma down here the peachoid the peachoid from south carolina seen that albert the bull i've not seen albert the bull in iowa the world's largest ball of popcorn i've not seen that i have seen the world's largest potato in idaho and this world's largest pecan world's largest hockey stick world's largest musky in hayward wisconsin i've been there you can go up inside that and stand in his mouth world's largest eight ball yeah it's also very cool over here on the other side World's largest goose, world's largest can of spinach, the world's largest, uh, I think that's the world's largest baseball bat in Louisville, Kentucky. World's largest badger, world's largest ball of tape. Oh, this is all so cool. So very cool to get to see a little small version of that. Hopefully someday I do get to check out the uh, museum of the uh, world's, oh man, this title. <laughs> world's largest collection of the smallest versions of the world's largest thing. Hopefully I get to see the proper museum at some point, but that was very, very cool. I was not expecting to find that back here behind the uh, Garden of Eden. Traveled here to the downtown area of the sleepy little Lucas, Kansas. I just have to start by wondering what the heck this is here on the uh, electrical pole. We have some sort of saber-toothed tiger, although it looks almost like a, a mashup of different creatures. Got a tiger head and like a weird little, weird little badger tail. Looks like here in Lucas we have a very rare sunglass tree. 
where people have put their sunglasses here on the pole. Interesting. Now, here is the actual storefront of the world's largest collection of world's smallest versions of world's largest things. You see Paul Bunyan there on the sign. Looks like they have a tiny version of Paul Bunyan. Like I said, unfortunately, um, Erica did not have a chance to open up yet before I made it to town, but I would have loved to have uh, checked it out in here. But uh, I'll have to leave that for next time, as we often do. Take a little peek there inside. See some of the largest versions. See that giant plate? That's the, we saw that We're coming into town. It looks like there's some sort of maybe ball of twine behind that. And uh, some other various world's largest things in their smallest form. You know, it's so hot here today in Lucas that you could literally fry an egg on the sidewalk along with some bacon. And this is what they call the Bowl Plaza here in Kansas. It's a public restroom uh, shaped like a decorative toilet. Look at this, they actually have a giant roll of toilet paper unfolding into Bowl Plaza. Please, no climbing, no bicycles, no skateboards, no rollerblades on this roll of toilet paper, thank you. I mean, you definitely shouldn't skateboard on that, but I can see how that would be attractive to a skateboarder. Let's look in the center of the toilet bowl here. This is very interesting. See all these items in this swirling water. There's a cell phone, a doll. Oh yeah. Just look at the interesting detail. A little alligator right there. Someone's lost keys. Someone's lost beard. Wallet, cigarettes, a kazoo, lots of, oh, there's these pills being spilled everywhere. And it looks like a little puppy is drinking this highly polluted water. Let's uh, head into Bull Plaza. Oh, that spooked me. All right, so let's see how a Public restroom becomes a roadside attraction. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at just on the walls here, the robots. Oh wow. Uh, hey, hey there. Well, there's a, a gun, a gun right there. Get all this detail. This is amazing. I love this little town. And just remember, it's a bathroom. The hand dryer there, and then we got a circle of uh, matchbox cars. In the stall here, got action figures. If you identify any of these action figures, leave a comment in the comment section. Oh, that's Wolverine. That's Vega from Street Fighter II. And look at there. There's the American Godzilla that everyone hated. Above the exit door, got chess pieces, a city made of dominoes. It's a beautiful piece of folk art that just happens to be a bathroom. Some more folk art here in the yard. Big frog right there. And if you're sick of folk art by now, how about some fork art? See these forks, these giant forks, different styles of forks penetrating the grass here. All these are different, different uh, types of forks. I don't know what they'd be used for. I'm always confused when it comes to cutlery. Oh, who is this? It's like a, like a mermaid, mermaid of some sort here. A giant fork over her head. I think we're gonna take a look here in the Grassroots Art Center. It seems like Lucas is the center for Grassroots Arts.
this uh, little red dog here offers wisdom from beyond for just a quarter. Let's put a quarter. Oh. No, it's a piece of candy, but I think it's got something in there. Let's crack that open. It says it's amazing how much you can do if you don't care who gets credit. Here's Carrie Nation, known for traveling around smashing up bars with an axe because she uh, hated people drinking so much. Some wonderful folk art down here. Let's see Marilyn Monroe coming out of a movie screen, attacking the crowd. And look at these sculptures and bottles. There's a Ferris wheel, a Jesus. Oh, look at this. This is hell, hell on the bottom. Earth in the middle, and then heaven on the top. This is the art of Herman Divers. He creates things out of pull tabs from, uh, I guess, soda or beer cans. You can see the full-size motorcycle here, and then a full-sized car. You take a look at that and see that there's actually a pull tab hat on the bench there. A set of pull tab clothing for both a man and a woman. This is the artwork of M.T. Liggett from uh, Mullinsville, Kansas, known for putting up uh, controversial and political um, pieces of art outside of his property in Kansas. Hopefully, uh, on this trip, I actually get to go over there. But uh, here's a sampling of his work. You can see the devil there. You can see, who's that? Camellius? I'm not sure. Oh, and there's Ken, Ken Starr as a dog, I think. <laughs> Look at that skeleton right there. It's a hospital here. You can see the waiting room right there. It's like maybe the cafeteria right there. And then up here, looks like they're doing surgery. wonderful circus figures here look at this clown here this clown has a pants full of cactus this is Gary Pendergrass has this steampunk ship that's pretty cool all the little details going on in there it's by Glenn Stark this is mule Skinner Bill and Clementine This is the Diebel House. Uh, we were brought over here by the Grassroots Art Center to take a tour of the house. In the backyard uh, is the original artwork made by Florence Diebel, who lived here. Uh, apparently she took some inspiration from the local Garden of Eden and began making her own sculptures. This artwork in the back of the house is made by Florence Diebel. She's a woman who uh, took a little inspiration from the Garden of Eden, but she made a little less controversial sculpture. She would sculpture places that she saw on vacation. Here is Mount Eisenhower, and over here we have Mount Rushmore. She had sculpted Mount Rushmore in her backyard. It's the Cathedral of the Tetons, the uh, Indian Pueblo there, the Capitol National Park in Utah. And then Oak Creek, Arizona. Here is the Kansas Mount Rushmore. Don Wilcox, BG Review. Don't know, don't know who these people are. I'm gonna head into the inside of the house. You can see a doll right there, embedded in concrete. And then look at this, these Barbies here, these strange hats on their heads. Now this is the inside of Florence Diebel's house, but uh, it has actually been transformed into a more modern art studio by an artist named Marie Pilar. She said oh, wow. that this is some of her newer stuff, so. Does somebody live here? Yeah, she did live here for quite a while. Yes, it her. The baby wrapped in bones there. See all these action figures. It's 
chains holding this glowing woman here. See the house covered in aluminum foil. And the artwork in here, really crazy. Look at, you have Barbie, a, 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 a disarticulated Barbie with Jar Jar Binks on her head. Look at that. The the Wizard of Oz. This, <laughs> oh, on May House, we can, she wanted people sheltering the yard. So the art center, the first Look year. The lures there. there. That was 2002. Heading into the bathroom here. You can see the tub oh, overflowing with baby dolls. Even the sink is crammed with dolls. Rebarb. I think this is the mask closet here. I think there may be a piano oh, yeah. hidden under that foil there. So thank you for joining me today here in Lucas, Kansas, the grassroots uh, art capital of the world. And uh, yeah, I love this town. It's an amazing little town, cute, adorable town with amazing artwork and art history. And uh, you, know, you know, a lot of times is some of the times the best uh, experiences when you come for one experience like I came here to see the Garden of Eden and then you see all these other cool things while you're here um, always fun when that happens uh, if you like sort of videos please check out the older videos on this channel I have filmed in the 48 continental United States filming roadside attractions folk art museums amusement parks haunted houses other fun stuff uh, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel it'll let you know when uh, new videos pop up and uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard from me once a month. Also, if you're interested in enamel pins, I have some enamel pins in the Etsy shop. And uh, all that just helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. And all that information is in the description of this video. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.